In this video, we'll continue with the chain rule examples. So for example three, um, it says find the derivative of y equals x over x minus five. You can rewrite that as three times x minus five to the negative one, and then apply the chain rule versus doing the product rules or quotient rule. So I'm gonna do it one using the chain rule and then we'll do it the way we learned before, which was using the quotient rule. And you'll see which one you may like better. I prefer the chain rule better, but some people may not want to view it as a chain rule, and so they'd rather just do it as a product a quotient rule. It's completely up to you. You'll see that you'll get the same thing. So for the chain rule, I would treat this as my inner function. So my derivative would be three times negative one, keep my base the same, decrease my power by one, and then because the base is not just an x, multiply by the derivative of that base. So then I get negative three, x minus five, negative two times one, or negative three, x minus five to the negative two, or negative three over x minus five squared. So this is what I end up with as my derivative. Now if I apply the quotient rule, I would get low d high, the derivative of three is zero, minus high d low over low squared. So zero times anything is zero. Here I get negative three, x minus five, squared. And you'll notice that I get the exact same answer as before. So it really makes no difference of which way you view it and which way you, you do it. As long as you follow the rules properly, you'll get the same exact answer. Example four is this one here. So if I rewrite that, remember you can never have um, radicals like this. They always have to be powers. So if I rewrite my function, it would be one minus x squared to the one half because the square root is equivalent to the one half exponent. Um, and we have a couple of things going on in this problem. One, we do have a, um, a chain rule problem because you'll notice that there's an inner function and then the square root is the outer function. However, we also have a product rule because aside from that chain rule here, you also have um, another function of x on next to it, which means it's a product, which means I will have to apply my product rule as well. So things are gonna start to build and get more complicated as we keep going in this section. Um, so we have two things that we have to address. One, the product rule, and two, the chain rule. The product rule is the first rule that has to get applied at the beginning. And as you do the product rule, the chain will, will fall into place. So when I take the derivative of this function, I'm going to be taking the product rule. So the first function times the derivative of the second function. And this is where the chain rule will come in. So bring down my power keep my base the same, decrease the power by one, and because my base is not just an x, I have to multiply by the, the derivative of that. So zero minus two x. That's the first term. Plus the second function times the derivative of the first function. And then now I can try to simplify this. So I get x cubed times one half times negative two x plus three x squared times one minus x squared raised to the one half. Well then this two and this two will cancel and this negative x and this x cubed 
will become negative x to the fourth. And typically, they like your answers to be in one fraction. So the first thing I'm gonna do is that negative means it's gonna go in the denominator, and the one half means it's going to be a square root in the denominator. And if you try to get a common denominator, that would mean that you would have to multiply um, this function here on the right by the square root of 1 minus x squared over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So when you've done that, you will get negative x to the fourth over square root of 1 minus x squared plus 3x squared times the square root of 1 minus x squared times the square root of 1 minus x squared will give you the square root of 1 minus x squared squared. Well, the square and the square root will undo each other, leaving me with just 1 minus x squared. And the denominator, as if there was a 1 down here, will just be 1 minus, or square root of 1 minus x squared. So then now, if I combine those into one fraction, because that was the focus here, that was the goal, I will have negative x to the fourth, and if I distribute this positive 3x squared, I will get positive 3x squared, negative 3x to the fourth. And if I combine my like terms, I get 3x squared minus 4x to the fourth over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Now that it's all in one big fraction, I am finished with finding the derivative of that function up here.